Welcome to Office Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. We have one of Naperville's own. It's Sonali Dev, and her new novel is called The Bollywood Bride. It's gotten a Kirkus review, and I know you're going to love this one, too. Sonali, welcome to Anderson's. Welcome back. Thank you. It's my favorite place to be. Oh, so well, we're so, so happy you're be. here. And I want to congratulate you. Num book number two is out in the world today. This is the actual yes. on-sale date today. <laughs> yes. And we're hosting your launch event, which is always so wonderful to do that for authors we really love. So I want to know, how does this feel different for you? Then, of course, the first book is, is you know, but it, it's, it is. It's still like launching a baby, you know, presenting a baby to the world. How does it feel for this one? Okay, it feels fantastic for one, but I have a slightly inappropriate story uh, well, to explain how it feels. That's okay, exactly. we like inappropriate okay, stories. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> good, then you like my books. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so with the first one, I think of it as going out into your backyard at night naked. And the second one is like going out into your front yard naked, but in broad daylight. You know? so <laughs> I like that comparison. Right? Yeah. So with the first one, you run in, you run out. You should, you know, no one's, you don't know if anyone's watching. Right. Someone might be, someone might not. You're like really focused on, you know, getting out there. But yeah. with the second one, you know, there's broad daylight, there's sure. windows, and you know sure. everyone's watching. So it's a whole different experience. Yeah. And. And I'm so glad to have it and everything, and I feel wonderful and grateful. But it's uh, it's a whole different experience. Yeah. Well, I, you know, a star star Kirk, Kirkus review. You can't get better than that. That is the gold standard for book reviewers. So congratulations on that. So to get that Kirkus star, we call that the K star. It's so important. So congratulations. That's Thank really you. really wonderful. So I know some a lot of people haven't read it yet, but those who got sneak peeks. So, so what are you hearing from, from your fans and your readers who, who loved, you know, the Bollywood affair and now, now Bollywood Bride is out? So what I'm hearing, and I had kind of expected to hear this, uh, was that they're very different books in terms of tone. So the first one was, um, was much lighter. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. It was almost a romantic comedy. And right. this one is kind of an intense, right, uh, right. internalized, more woman's journey, kind of just angst and more angst kind yeah, of thing. Right. But, uh, so I was a little nervous about how that difference is going to go down, but I think uh, everything I'm hearing is fantastic. Right, so yeah. what everyone's saying is, it's different, but it's great. You know, yeah. it's different, but it's great, which is great because I feel like everyone who says that is trying to tell other readers, don't be afraid of it. Right, which is fantastic. right, right. So Ria Pakar, who, she appeared in your first book. So tell us a little bit how, just briefly, so, so tell us a little about her, and is she based on yourself? I always love to know. You know the main protagonist of so many, so many stories, so many novels. You want to know where, what are they made up of? Where do their pieces come from? So it's an interesting story again. So she is not at all anything like me. Okay. Um, it, it, she, so I grew up in India, and um, it was to explain this. Um, so we went to school in uniforms. It was a much more uh, homogenous society. Anyone outside of the norm was kind of, you know, the freak. Right. Um, it was, uh, so it was a really strange kind of, mm -hmm. great for the people who were the norm, but I always wondered about the children. And there were a few kids who, so, so kids who came from bro broken homes or from any kind of out of the norm thing, um, they carried the weight of that. You know, sure, it sure. was everywhere. It went everywhere with them. And mm -hmm. I was fascinated by that experience as a child. So if you had mental illness in your family, if you had a parent who had passed away, if you, you know, had any kind of struggle, you were so the other right, that right. it was, um, and I think that's a great thing about the world we live in, that that's changing, mm -hmm. you know, and then the acceptance is fantastic. But, but being that person who carries that weight right. uh, of being the other, that's kind of where Rhea came from, right. that struggle of um, carrying those um, those stigmas and facing them every single day. Right, and having um, and having even older generations, and, and we don't want to give too much of yes, the story away. Yes. We don't want any spoilers yes. here. Yes. But but the subject is mental illness in this yes. story, and yes. knowing that she has it in her family and the stigma there yes. is to that. Yes. And so that was an interesting what you brought because. You know, you're writing in the romance genre, but I think this is not just a romance novel. This is so much more. 
it fits so many other other genres all together. So, so tell us, where did the seeds start to grow? So the roots for this story, where did it start? Because Rhea was, she appeared briefly in your first novel. So tell, tell us how the seeds for this one started to grow. Okay, so first, this was the book that I wrote first. This is my first oh. completed novel. This is the one that I first sold. Um, and by the time I sold it, I had both written. So okay. I kind of had both those books ready. And I felt like um, Affair was closer to completion mm -hmm. and more ready. And I felt like this was a more, um, more delicate topic. And I felt like I wanted to work a little bit longer and harder on it. I wanted to have that experience of being, you know, of having one book un un right. you know, sure. under my belt. Yeah. And that is why we kind of flipped the order of the books around. Oh, so interesting. It, yes, so it really is the first one I wrote. And uh, The Seed is actually um, a family friend who, um, so I grew up, you know, how, um, I, I, I grew up with a whole lot of aunts and, you know, um, storytellers, my mom's yeah, aunts, right. and, you know, a lot of women who told stories. And there was this whole gossip session um, um, culture almost, and they talked right. a lot. And one of the stories that everyone always talked about was this one, uh, actually it was one of my dad's bosses uh, when he was in the Indian Air Force, and his wife, went mad in um, childbirth so oh, okay. you know this was the and as a child you hear well, all sure. these things and they become yeah. you know this legend yeah. and okay. so so I knew somewhere there was this child whose only relationship with her mother was that she caused her to lose her life as she knew it you know so she's locked up in an asylum somewhere mm -hmm. and it's sure. thanks to this child and I always kind of was uh, I never met the girl Right. Um, I have very, very faint memories of her father, but I never met her. And I, you know, you always wonder, what, right. what, what is right. that like? And yeah. that's really where Rhea was born. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is so interesting. I had no idea you wrote this this novel first before the other. Oh, that's so interesting. Yes. Well, 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 when I wrote it, and that first version that I sold was uh, was much less developed. Sure. So. Sure. Sure. Okay. So, so that topic, you know, it's a tough topic no matter where it appears. Oh yeah. And it's very, and it's tough for any family so so Rhea carries this the stigma and it's so interesting the, the relationship because you know we're looking at so many themes that come through your books and and these are universal themes it doesn't matter what culture you're from but those universal themes you know of family and devotion and love and passion and and guilt and all those shame all those things are universal you know those those names that you put into it so Rhea has this shame and it kind of makes her shove away the love of her life in a way. Yes. I don't want to give away too much. I Absolutely. think I gave away too much already. Yeah, that's in the back blur, <laughs> so yeah. So, so tell us about him, because he is, in, is such a wonderful character. Thank so you. Tell, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. I love, uh, love Vikram, of course. Yeah. Um, so he is, um, is more interestingly, he comes out of my fascination for um, the South Asian culture here in America and the whole stereotype of the overachieving Indian kid. And, um, you know, I mean, I have two kids and I have a lot of nieces, nephews. We live in this culture where the pressure to excel oh. is insane. Yes, you know, it is. And there's a whole lot of reasons for it. You're, you're first generation, you have, that's your ticket. It's, you know, education is seen as more important than breath right, in Indian right. families. Yeah. And, you know, that's how these children are raised. And the pressure of it, gets lost because you just think oh you know just another Indian overachiever so mm -hmm. it's such and my kids say this they're like really mom that's you know we don't want to be just that right. and yeah. uh, so so yeah. that whole so he came out of that place where he seems he looks like such an like such an easy life on the outside mm -hmm. and everything is laid out for him and he knows exactly where he's going and it's all kind of expected nothing is stellar no matter how stellar he is um, and then what happens when your plans change what happens yeah. when um, you know, you lose control over um, where you're intending to go, over the path that's set for you. And that's right. kind of where it came right. from. You know, I, I'm wondering in your stories, and, and now now that you, you wrote the story first, but then you, you recrafted it and, and, and developed it more, do you outline? And do you know when you're, when you're writing your stories, and we'll talk about the environment, which you write about a little bit later, but do you, or do you let the, the story take you, you know? Or is it a little bit of both? 
It's definitely a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, so I am definitely not um, not a plotter. So okay. not scene by scene. I don't know where my story is going. What I do know really well is my characters. Okay. So I've been fortunate enough with these first few books that I live with them for a very long time. So they're real, you know, really real people to me. I have their histories down like three generations deep, where they're coming from, where their grandparents are coming from, yeah. you know, in terms of who they were. Sure. So I have my characters really, um, you know, I don't want to say really de well developed because it sounds immodest, but I know them really well. Yeah, so you know yes. where the story is taking, you know it from their perspective. You're yes. inside their heads. Really well, well, yeah, so I know yeah. them as people, yes. So, right. but I also know, uh, and I know what their big flaws are, so I know what they're going to work through, and I know what the conflict is, so I know the arc of my story really well. Uh, I know where they're going to end up, which w within the structure of genre. Uh, since I, you know, if you think of them as love stories, at least you know the end point is somewhat um, set. But I know what arc they're going to travel, right. and I know what the big uh, paradigm shift moments for them okay. are. I know when and how they will turn. I know no details of it really, you know. So I know, you know, she, he's going to have to give up this belief he holds. How it's going to happen, that kind of as I'm writing, I right. figure out. But so I know right. the arc and I know the big turning points. Okay. So. When you came to the United States, how old were you, and, and and why did you come? I know I know the answers, but everybody else would like to know <laughs> yes. the answers who are who's watching this. But w why did you come? Because I feel this these books are so important. We don't have enough books of this from oh, this okay. diversity, but it's also it's contemporary, it's modern, yes. it's it's Indian American culture, but it's giving giving us a view of having feet in both cultures, which is what you have and what you experience in and what so many others and it gives us a viewpoint that is so important. So tell us what brought you to the States and yes. how, what it's been like for you. So first thank you, yes, I, you know, I mean I think that um, absolutely we, we're nowhere near where we want to be with, you know, how much diversity, um, um, how much diversity not just um, our books need but more, I think, even commercial fiction, because we do see oh, a lot yeah. of it in literary fiction, but commercial yeah. fiction is almost entirely. And children's you know, books, too. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, and those are the books that, you know, have huge reading audiences, and we are seeing very homogenous stories come out for all these years. So, yes, so thank you. I, um, um, that means a lot to me that that's happening with these yeah. books, which has been fantastic. Now, um, it's, the other thing I always say is I almost have no immigrant angst. And it, it probably is not something, you know, I should admit, but I really don't. I mean, right. I, I've never felt like a foreigner in this country That's any more than I felt, you know, when I was living in India, because we all, I was a teenager there, and you're right. naturally angsty right. as a teenager, and you feel well, like a foreigner in your own body. That's universal, too. Right? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, so I don't have immigrant angst, and I feel like my books are not about immigrant angst at all. Right. They're just about, you know, you as a human being and your yeah. story, and sure. it's that kind of angst. Um, but so so that transfers, I think, from um, from for me as a person, as an author, into my stories is that it isn't just another South Asian story about immigrant angst. About although I was um, I I was a young bride who came to this country. I had had um, an arranged marriage, not your typical arranged marriage. We were basically set up, and I married my husband um, really soon after I met him. Although I hadn't met his parents, so it wasn't that kind of arranged marriage, but it was a setup. And I was a young bride, so really, you know, all of the typical arranged marriage stories could have been me, but it wasn't, right, you know, which right, tells us sure. that's what are stereotypes, yeah, right? right? It was nothing. Sure. I came here, I felt at home, but I still had all my other struggles of being a young mom and all of those oh, things. Yeah. And those yeah. are kind of, uh, I think, the stories that. I think need to be out there and that I want to tell right, and, and, and so right. that's how my um, immigrant experience translates. Right. So knowing, knowing that you, you, you are, you know, you're, you're blended into two cultures, does it provide you with really good fodder? Because I know you mentioned the storytelling oh tradition gosh, in your family and it is in amongst many cultures that storytelling is so important. But how does that provide that fodder for you for that story? And because it has to have that basis, that so that grounding, you know. So I think two things. Uh, for me specifically, one is I grew up watching a lot of Bollywood movies, a lot of Hollywood also, but a lot of Bollywood movies. So. Uh, that's a whole style. Stylistically, sure. that's a whole different kind of uh, storytelling. And I think I try, and, and I consciously try to translate some of that over mm -hmm. without translating, you know, the, the requisite melodrama with it. But 
but one of my things when I started writing was to try and capture that feeling of a Bollywood film. So when we were young and we watched these movies, you kind of got lost inside it. Yeah. And it stayed with you for, for a week, you know, for, for 10 days. And that this is why with, traditionally with Bollywood, I feel like so many people kept on going back and watching those movies over and over mm -hmm. again because you couldn't leave that world yeah, and you couldn't right, leave sure. the story. And I wanted that immersion in. So stylistically, that's what I was going for, storytelling-wise. And then, of course, I, as a culture, um, you know, I come from a very close family and a very close extended family. So really, there's no concept of personal space, <laughs> as you right. see in my stories. Yeah, there's right. no, you know, I mean, sure, I say, sure. I, I use the word privacy around my mom and she's like, what? What's like, that? I do not compute. <laughs> so it's, You're you know, right. it's not yeah. even a concept yeah. of, yeah. there's no personal space between mother and daughter. What are you talking about? Like, my mom would be heartbroken if I told her you need to give me my space. Right. But so storytelling, and then again, my mom, her mom, all of these aunts, there's just, you know, the, uh, the long afternoons without television or without video games was about hiding under the sheets during siesta time and listening to my grandmothers and, you know, yeah. and my aunts telling these stories about families and interpreting and reinterpreting characters like real life sure. characters and the same story changed every time it right. was told. You know, each it was. It's they just they played with these stories more right. than just told them. But that's so. what the oral tradition does. Yes. You know, and, and yes. e every storyteller yes. of that story adds their own embellishments Absolutely. and their own specialties. So Absolutely. That. So you know, that's yeah. how my brain got wired. You're thinking, if this hadn't, this person hadn't done this, and if this person hadn't reacted this way to her, she would be a different person. Her life would be a different life. And right. you know, so that, that there's there's definitely. Yeah that huge influence of that kind of storytelling. So, so explain, explain to some of us who need more explanation, you know, Bollywood being a sort of a stylistic, whether in film or dance or whatever, but explain to it what it means to you and why, why is it it's, 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 it's great for, for fiction but it's also in, in, in many different art forms. So, so tell us a little bit about Bollywood. Yeah, and, and with Bollywood and me personally, there's two, two aspects to okay. it. I, um, so I, I grew up with, um, you know, kind of in that world, but inside it and outside it just enough to be an outside, you know, to be able to see it really yeah, clearly. Yeah. So I had friends who was, um, you know, whose parents were stars. And then going from there, my best friend is a movie producer. My oh, sister-in-law wow. is an actress. I have friends who are journalists. So, you know, we kind of live yeah. inside of that sure. world. Okay. So there's there's a lot of um, familiarity with it, mm -hmm. but a lot of, you know, so it's, it's, it's familiar, but I'm not attached to it sure. where I can't sure. see it right. clearly. So um, that's that's one aspect of it. And as far as the stylistic uh, thing is concerned, I think that just the intensity and the drama, it's like basically this drama, just this side of melodrama. Mm -hmm. It's its these operatic scenes. You know, it's these crescendos of music that automatically burst in your head. So it's a very heightened, yeah. uh, you know, a heightened form of... Um, a heightened place of emotion. Right. And I think that a lot of people who enjoy love stories, whether it's genre romance mm -hmm. or it's, you know, it's, 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 you know, Dr. Zhivago, but it's, it's anybody who enjoys a good love story loves those emotional highs. Right, and right. that's why we seek these stories out. And I think there's a really good correlation between those two things stylistically. Yeah. So it's just, it's just taking emotions and really exploring them uh, and every nuance of them and kind of exploding it into the air. Right. And that's, I think, right. what Bollywood is. Right. And I think, I think adding this is so great that you're doing this and adding it to the romance genre. But like I said, this, you know, I, I think your books are more than just romance. But when I, you think of the, many people have an idea of what they think romance novels are, you know. But they don't realize that romance readers are a huge legion. It's a huge group of readers, voracious readers, incredible community of readers, but also authors. So, you know, having your second book out in the world, what have you discovered about the romance world, romance authors, and, and, and what do you think about the whole, the whole community of what makes up romance? It's so amazing there's no words for it. Yeah. I mean, it is... Um, in every which way, it's a sisterhood. Um, but it's not just that, because that makes us sound like we're a bunch of women sitting around and being sisterly, you know. Yeah, but right. that's not it. They're extreme. It's it's a bunch of, it's how all business, I think, should be run. I think it's how the world should be run. Um, because there's immense sense of community. Mm -hmm. There's immense um, sense of purpose and um, focus on the bottom line. 
So the business is really important, the community is really important, and taking the craft and doing as well by it as you possibly can. Right. So all of the things that are important in business, product, community, um, bottom line, those three things are hit in the romance genre and the romance community like nowhere else. Oh. I think. Oh, for sure. Certainly nowhere else in publishing, and I feel, you know, not in a whole lot of businesses. Um, when I said sisterhood, I mean that in a purely supportive sense. Uh -huh. So for me, the experience I've had, I mean, you could walk up to someone like a, a Susan Elizabeth Phillips or right. a Robin Carr, yeah. and you have, it's, it's a completely flat, I mean, of course, there's a lot of hero worship because these women are amazing, but I have... But there's no, um, the levels of modesty and the levels of welcoming, openness, and support. I mean, I had, um, I have to tell you about, because Susan Elizabeth Phillips Oh, yeah, another is, Naperville. Right, you know, she's the other yes, Naperville. Another, yeah, romance exactly. author. Who, and, and, and of course, naturally, I'm a huge fan, um, but... And she of you, too. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, well, that's, yes, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but... And she does um, a lot of workshops and she comes speaks mm -hmm. to our writers group. So when I was unpublished, um, she was doing one of those workshops for us. And, um, you know, she asked me what it is that I'm writing. And as mm -hmm. soon as I told her what it was, you know, she put her finger in my face and she said, you better hurry up and write that book because the world needs, needs more it. books like that. And, and for she's her, right. it, yeah. it was amazing yeah. for me as a nobody, as a as somebody who's hearing constantly, oh, there's no place for these books. Oh, there's no place for these books. Bollywood, what? You know, for that person to see that and to have Susan Elizabeth Phillips look me in the eye and say those mm -hmm. words to me changed everything. Yeah, and sure. then after having said that, when I go to her and I say, well, guess what? I just sold. For, you know, for her to say, oh, great, send it to me. Yeah. And then to, to back it up in every way uh, and put her money where her mouth is in mm -hmm. every way was, is amazing. And you don't see that in a whole lot of businesses, you know. No, it's but, a very uh, generous group and, and, and it, a very accepting group. But I think it, it is such a community. And I'm always amazed. It, it's when, amazing. When romance readers get together in a group, they're like instant friends. They may never have met each other, but they're instant friends. There's no need yeah. for translation. You know, right. it's exactly. like we're talking the same. You know, we're, we don't yeah. need words. It's yeah. it's uh, yeah. we're talking through our uh, just. It's it's this wonderful. It's like the you know. It's it's yeah. wonderful, but it's because of that level of support. You know, there's no competitiveness. There might be competition, but there's no competitiveness. I haven't seen any, and it's not. It's Susan and. Almost every I have yet to meet somebody who um, who isn't focused on the entire genre being lifted and right. in helping every single person who wants and needs help. Right, and and I think your books will help. They do help lift the genre because they're 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 not only full of passion and love. They're smart. Thank it's you. not just sexy. Okay. They're smart, and they do they do cross that cultural it's just i think there's it's really there's no other books like this so i just want to tell you they this is what we've needed for a long time within this genre but it's 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 outside the genre so what i want to know is why romance and how why did you decide to write a romance novel so um i didn't didn't really grow up reading them as much as a lot of uh, you know a lot of people in india and a lot of other romance writers do mm -hmm. um but everything that i was reading i was zeroing in on the romance. So it was really funny. I, and I think the reason I didn't grow up reading it is because there was no access for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, so in all the books that I was reading, it was, uh, you know, I would, I would read the romance first. And I was reading it for the love story. Mm -hmm. And um, almost, um, so, so if I'm reading Sister's Keeper, I'm reading Julia and Campbell's story first right through and then going back and reading, the, you know, which is an embarrassing yeah. thing to admit, but yeah. I was doing okay. that. And so when I actually found Lisa Kleypas and Susan and Kristen Higgins, it was like, oh my gosh. So I remember picking up the phone and calling my best friend in India and saying, did you know there's an entire genre that's just love stories? <laughs> she was like, really? <laughs> so it was actually right. for me, you know, uh, wow. And then uh, at the time, and I've always written since I was very young. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, naturally being South Asian, I was trying to write, you know, the next. Uh, so I was trying to write literary, which really meant not knowing what genre was, just being uninformed. Sure, right. And so as soon as I found this, um, it was like coming home. Yeah. You know, it was like, oh, this is yeah. it. So there was, and you write what you love. There's just nothing I love yeah. more than a good love story. What was the first romance novel you read? 
That, that sort of got you hooked on this. That's an easy one. Rose oh. Haven by Catherine Coulter that okay. I read quite by accident because I sent my husband to the library and he picked up the first thing he saw. That's actually how I started reading romances. You're kidding me. So yes. he just grabbed something thinking you might like this. Right? Uh, thinking, oh shoot, I need to be home. I was sick and I was at home and he's like, what's there? And he oh, literally just like didn't even look at it. I looked at the back and I said, and it's a medieval romance, forced oh, marriage, funny. all of that. And I'm looking at it. You've been married to me for 10 years. You think this is what I read? You're crazy. Yeah. I opened it, 102 Fever, read it through the night, went back, read all of her books, and then just have not stopped since. Oh my gosh, that is <laughs> such a great story. Yes, oh my gosh, that's crazy. wonderful. So, I love the covers. So, did you have much say in the covers? I love them. I mean, I love my cover designer yeah, with a passion. Right. I just love her. The third one is even more gorgeous. <laughs> but she's, <laughs> she's wonderful. Uh, and... Um, Yes, I've done. Um, they asked me for cover concepts, so I do cover concept sheets, which essentially is all these visual flashes mm -hmm. that um, I dump into a Word file and send them, saying this is what I like about this, this is what means something, um, you know, this is the region of India that I'm, you know, that these characters are mm -hmm. from. So they got this actually, this particular sari is called a Paitani. It comes from this region of India that I'm from, oh, that okay. Ria's from. Yeah. And it was amazing. Like when I saw that they found the exact sari, it was incredible wow. to me. And it's and just. And you didn't, you didn't tell them to search for this? No, right? what I did tell them was I, I saw, I sent them other images of brides from that particular mm -hmm. region. And then it just so happens that if you're looking for a ride for a bride from that region, uh -huh. that, you know, the chances are this is the sari you're going to find. Right. But, right. but I don't know how she does it. And I, I think my editor has a big hand in it. But I send them these crazy flashes yeah. and montages and they take it and they just come yeah. up with the no, exact right thing. Yeah. It's amazing and I love them for it. So I don't know, what are you working on now? Now that this book, now that, you know, I know you've just launched this one today, yes. so yes. we want to know what's coming up next though too. Well, uh, and, and it's been actually so great that I have been, um, uh, tomorrow I have a meeting with my editor to go over the edits for book three. So I've actively actually been working on book three for these past three months, which has made this release so much easier because yeah. I haven't had time to obsess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and so so within the next two months now we have to close this off and it goes into production. So I'm actively okay. working on book three, which is uh, even darker. Oh, uh, and 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 it kind of goes into the space of uh, organ black markets uh. and human trafficking. Mm. Um, it's it's the story of this uh, this guy whose wife is murdered um, in front of his eyes while investigating. Um, an organ black market ring that she chances upon while working in this slum. Mm. Um, and they're both doctors. And then two years after that, and it basically destroys him and, you know, all of his nobility and his 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 need to help people and all of that is mm. gone. And when we find him, he's basically on a cruise ship treating sunburn and, you know, upset stomachs. And this woman comes up to him and says, I have your wife's heart. Oh. Yes, I and do. she's talking to me from uh, the beyond and she needs something from you. Ooh, so, okay. We gotta have so this soon, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's gonna be oh, out wow. of my hands. Wow, yeah. that sounds fantastic. So it wow. is, but it is, it's, inc it's, been, it's incredibly dark. Um, yeah. But I also think, you know, uplifting one hopes right, and, you know, right. so well. So when, when will this come out? This comes out in a year. Okay. They're one a year, I think. Okay, we'll promise now. you'll come and see us oh, for that course. one. Oh, of course. I right. will come see you anytime. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for sitting down with me, and congratulations on Bollywood Bride. And come back and see us for that next novel, too. Wow. Thank you. Anytime. Right. What a great conversation we've had with one of Naperville's own is Sonali Devitt. Her new novel is called The Bollywood Bride. It's got a starred Kirkus Reviewed. You'll love it, too. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed.